So welcome uh, in our session still with the CHRP 10 November 2023. Question 5, 5A uh, says, evaluate the conditions that performance related pay schemes should meet to be effective. Evaluate the conditions that performance pay related uh, performance related pay schemes should meet to be effective so here we are talking about uh, about uh, performance related pay uh, scheme and we said in performance related pay scheme here we use the performance of an employee in order for compensation to be uh, to be done so meaning the more you perform the more compensation you get and vice versa so that is how normally a performance related pay scheme works. So the question is looking for uh, variables that make the performance pay scheme to be effective. What are some of the things or what are some of the requirements or what are some of the qualities and characteristics that a performance related pay scheme should have in order for it to be, to be effective. Number one, should be made up of clear and measurable goals. In order for you to be able to pay a person, definitely you need to have goals that are associated with that certain job or with that certain uh, role that has been given. And uh, for you to know whether this person has performed or not, you'll have to look at how uh, the goals have been have been met. That is why you insist on coming up with measurable goals, something that you can be able to measure and you be in a position to tell whether somebody has indeed performed basically not so you need to have clear and measurable goals in place in order for this particular scheme to work well and then also the scheme should also be flexible because remember the roles keep on changing from time to time or maybe sometimes responsibilities keep on changing from time to time so this scheme should be that flexible in a way that it should be able to accommodate changes so whenever you are you are you, you are you you basically uh, change in terms of responsibilities or whenever your roles have changed a bit because of the dynamic nature of the industry then such a system should be able to accommodate such changes so uh, for the system to be effective or for the scheme to be effective it has to be also flexible and then also it has to be fair consistent and transparent when you talk of fair and consistent that means how performance of person a is measured should exactly be how performance of person B is measured. That is how you bring about the issue to do with fairness, consistency, as well as transparency. Don't use certain metrics for another person and then you go and use certain uh, different metrics for another person. In such a way, you not be fair. Maybe some people will get uh, 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 metrics which are very friendly, others will get which are not friendly. So at least ensure that the system is just fair for everyone, very consistent and transparent for everyone. That is also another way of making the scheme or performance uh, pay related scheme to be uh, to be effective. And then also the scheme should also be closely linked to performance because you're using performance to pay. You're using the performance of an employee to pay. Then ensure the scheme that you put in place has a very close link with performance. Otherwise, most of the employees will be paid money that they're not supposed to be paid. Either they'll be, others maybe they'll be underpaid or maybe they'll be uh, under remunerated, something of that sort. So ensure that the system, because it's a performance pay, uh, a performance related pay scheme, ensure it has a very close linkage with uh, performance so that is why we, we talk of performance process the scheme must be closely linked to a comprehensive performance management process without such a process performance related pay can't be expected to work properly so ensure that is also in place and then also in order for it to be effective ensure that it, it is in line with the company culture when you talk of company culture here we are talking about the company goals and objectives uh the, the personal goals of the employees we are talking about the mission and vision of the company culture basically carries a lot or carries a, a, a a few variables in it so in order for the pay related scheme to be effective ensure that it is aligned with the culture of the company the culture of the organization it supports the strategy of the organization it supports the goals and objectives of the organization that is also something else that you need to 
uh, ensure it's part of the scheme in order for it to be effective and then lastly ensure that you have effective communication channels put in place in order for this scheme to work well ensure effective communication with employees let your employees understand what is expected of them let your personnel understand what is expected of them so that they know this is how i'm supposed to work and this is how i'm going to be paid when this and this happened so ensure effective communication channels ensure all the employees are fully aware of what it is expected of them or what performance looks like because that performance is what will make them to be paid so if they have no if if they have no a good understanding of whatever uh, expectations you put in place chances are you'll be paying these persons uh, or people uh, the personnel uh, some amount of money that maybe they are not supposed to be paid basically because they did not have a good uh, a clear expectation of what it's supposed or what or what they're supposed to do or or, or or what the responsibilities they are they're supposed to deliver within the organization so ensure that is open ensure that is clear and ensure that is understandable by all the employees within the within the organization so those are some of the conditions uh, that any performance related pay scheme should meet in order for it to be in order for it to be effective ensure it's supported with clear goals and uh, uh, clear and measurable goals and then ensure it's flexible sorry for that and then also ensure it is fair and consistent and transparent as well and then also ensure it has a good linkage with the performance issues and then it should be aligned with culture and then should be supported with effective communication channels so those are some of the answers that we have for, an, for number five a number five b uh outline the methods that an organization may use to empower teams what are some of the methods that an organization could use to empower teams when we talk of teams these are basically the people working in organization only that they work as a team so what could you do to empower teams one always show appreciation for their contribution whatever it is that they do it uh perfectly whatever it is that they do it well ensure to appreciate them ensure to to recognize them that is why we have uh, systems of reward and uh, recognition within organizations for those employees who work well definitely you give them an appreciation that will motivate them that will increase their energy that will make them to become more motivated and so on and so forth so always show appreciation to their contribution that is number one that is uh, a way you can use to empower your teams and then encourage open and honest feedback and when you talk of encouraging open and honest feedback that will be dependent on number three open lines of communication how are your lines of communication because you might have employees who are there they have a lot of feedback to tell they have a lot of input suggestions opinions but the lines of communications are not allowing them so if the lines of communications are not allowing them that means you're not empowering these people because the moment they have issues to suggest to you the moment they have uh, suggestions or opinions uh, or any views in connection to work related issues they cannot hear them out so how do you empower them if they cannot hear such issues out so ensure that to give them an open and uh, a, 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 a free line of communication that they will be able to use to give feedback open and honest feedback so that is number two and three uh basically encourage open and honest feedback as well as open lines of communication the moment all these things are put in place it's a way of you empowering your employees because at any point in time they feel like they have something to come and tell you the lines of communication are open at any point they have some feedback that they're supposed to deliver the lines of communications are open so by doing so you are empowering them we have number four uh give employees autonomy of assignments yes not only over assignment but also in the roles and responsibilities give your employees autonomy when you talk of autonomy this is the ability of you leaving them to do as per how they think it's right for example once you delegate your employees uh you give them instructions and then they understand the outcome that they're supposed to deliver or they understand the expectations that you, you have so definitely when you talk of giving them autonomy how you work is not how your employee will work so if you have a different way of working your employee also could have a different way of working so the, the the only important thing here you should look at is the outcome 
irrespective of the process your employee uses. So leave them to work according to how they feel it's right. So long as they do the right thing, so long as they come up with the right uh, outcome, so long as they meet up with the expectation, that is what matters. But in terms of working and how they do it, leave it to the employee, at least so that they can feel like they have some sense of control towards some work that you've given them. So long as they do it perfectly, efficiently, effectively, that is what matters. So always give autonomy of assignments or even in their relevant roles and responsibility, always give them the, the autonomy. Let them decide on their own. Let them make things work well on their own without you having to tell them and maybe being authoritative and instruct them in everything. No. So that is also something else that will empower employees. Uh, lastly, provide necessary resources. Yes, whatever it is that they need in terms of time, money, uh, backup, whatever it is always ensure that they have it so that they can they can basically use it whenever they want that is also another way of you empowering them because they know at any point in time when i'm running out of this and this this and this will be available so at the end of the day this person works but he knows that at the end of the day he has enough backup for him to work he has enough backup for him to achieve whatever objectives he has been allocated to and that will also motivate the, the employees. So those are some of the ways. There can be so many ways you can use to empower your teams, to empower your employees. These are just but a few that we have. So that is question five. Thank you. Let's meet in our next uh, session, which will be number six.